So I'm Wilma Corston. I've been a part of the Chester Community Theater since I was about five years old. Uh, my name is Lisa Aiken and uh, my family have been living in Chester since 79. Well, I'm Paul Dyer. I am a director of the Sir Christopher Andachi Theater Foundation. Uh, my name is Susie Fraser and I grew up here in Chester. And my name is Malcolm Calloway. I'm an artist and a playwright. I'm Joan Clether and I've always had a love for the theater. My name is Ross Norman. My wife, uh, Willa, and I purchased a home in the area in 1998. My name is Nancy Wells. I've been singing since I was about 15. Uh, my name is Peter Smith. I'm the founding managing director of what was then the Chester Summer Festival. I'm Doug Ross, and uh, for years I taught high school at Chester Municipal High School, and then later at Forest Heights. And with me is Aaron Gore. And Aaron taught at Chester Municipal High School and at Forest Heights. Hi, I'm Gail Fraser. Uh, I'm sitting in the Chester Theater, my play host, and looking at all the renovations and realizing I've been around here for a long time. We were drawn to the Chester Playhouse. I love its unique uh, mix of uh, professional touring companies and local community talent. The only two movies I actually remember seeing are the Parent Trap, and I think that was in the 60s, and the uh, Herbie the Love Bug, so two Disney movies. In those days, on a rainy, stormy day when you couldn't use the Yacht Club or play golf or play tennis, one went to the Canary, to the movie theater. And there was no seats, so it was just a bare, slanted floor. And I remember it was super uncomfy, but the kids didn't care, and they brought out this beautiful puppet show, the Mikado, and I remember all the glitz and glam and the reds and the greens and the lights. And I don't remember the, the context, I don't remember the story, but I remember the I remember the puppets. We put a lot of people through there, especially in the Christmas shows. I mean, over the years, a hundred people. Some people think it's actually, you know, a variety show and they sort of break into their own little bits in the middle of it and that's when trouble starts. Mm. No. Nancy Marshall had done a couple of plays at the Chester Playhouse. And so she said, why don't we do Godspell there? And for me, that was awesome. And the reviews were incredible. And almost everybody said, wow, I don't think I could see a play like that um, even in New York City. I, mean, I got the opportunity to, to open for Jill Plaskett. Um, Roma allowed me to do that with Ellie, which was really, really great. Our initial season, we rented what was then the Leading Wind Theater from Leo and Dora Veldman. We actually ran the first season with a for sale sign on the front of the building. When the 2008 global financial crisis hit, that year, every one of our loyal sponsors contacted us and told us that they had to withdraw their funding for the next 12 months because of the uncertainty caused by the crisis. Every one of our loyal sponsors returned the following year. Where students got to perform in a real theater and it was, it was neat. Then we'd move into the theater. When we moved into the theater, the magic started happening. It yeah. was fabulous. Yeah. So this high school uh, experience, I think was a u unique experience. And um, so I, I just, want to take some time and tell you about it. And yeah. Thank you for coming down to help. Oh yeah, that's all right, Doug. Anytime. <laughs> yeah. Anytime you need a producer, Doug. <laughs> okay, okay, good. I'll definitely still keep pursuing guitar and singing. I'm planning on um, reaching out to the theater community in Wolfville when I'm up at Acadia, just because the theater community has all here has always kind of welcomed me with open arms. Well, I'm really appreciative of the fact that uh, the Playhouse is continuing to offer such quality productions. Uh, I've had a great bunch of people um, over the years. And it was something that everybody looked forward to every mm -hmm. Christmas. You know. I'm just looking forward to having it back. I'm looking forward to seeing the new renovations. I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm excited for the accessibility. I mean, I think it's really, it's prevalent now. The fondest wish for anybody who gets involved at the early stages of a project is that even after they've left it behind, they want to see it thrive and survive. And that's certainly what's happened with the Playhouse. I'm looking forward to the doors reopening and uh, the stage lit and the community and the village of Chester 
uh, once again can enjoy the venue. It's gonna, it's gonna be it's gonna be great, great. Um, hopefully, um, in our post-COVID world, um, we'll all be able to go back to the Playhouse and pile in there like we like we always did. Uh, but the best thing I think, really, is the community spirit and the way people here. Uh, support local businesses and particularly gems like the Chester Playhouse. I hope this small light will not only light the way for the former actors and performers on the Chester Playhouse stage, but also for the ghosts of all our former audiences and supporters who will be able to see the light from their seats in the new house. I'm hoping that this new theatre will bring many, many good memories to others in the future for many years to come because the Playhouse is an important part of this community and I wish everyone well and I'm longing for the opening in the spring.